Hey everyone, I'm Mind, and I chose to wear a green shirt again, so go ahead and say it in the comments. I look like Shaggy from Scooby Doo. <laughs> Today I'm going to be doing an elemental power tier list. I'll be ranking all the Ninjago elemental powers and basing them on how strong I think they are compared to each other. I did this on Instagram like a couple months ago. The thing is, on Instagram, I just posted the final list. And I didn't really explain why I thought this, why I had these opinions, why I thought some powers are stronger than others. So I wanted to go through and redo my list. Something It'll probably be very similar to the one I did on Instagram, but some places placements might be different, and I want to explain my reasoning to why I put each character in each tier. But as always, before I get started, please leave a like on this video and subscribe if you're new. I produce LEGO videos every single day. It's usually Ninjago stuff, but it can be LEGO stuff of any kind. So if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see it. Now let's go on to this video. So once again, I'll be using TierMaker.com, but this time, instead of stealing somebody else's template, this is my own that I made a couple months ago. I made this template. So we've got all the Elemental Masters here. Uh, I'm going to be ranking the powers, not the characters. The characters and the powers are two very different things. And I'm not ranking them by how much I like them. I'm ranking them on their strength. Because something like uh, Gravity, I like that power a lot, but I don't think it's very strong. So that's going to be rated lower. So keep that in mind, I'm not judging these characters by their personalities or by how much I like them, I'm judging them based on how strong, how, not, not necessarily how strong, how useful I think their abilities are. Like, if you put all these guys in a fight or send them on a quest, who would be the more, most successful, okay? So we've got seven tiers here, Amber tier S, A, B, C, D, F. If you've never seen a tier list before, S is the highest rank, F is the lowest. And I added Amber tier because uh, if you couldn't guess, uh, Amber goes in that tier because Amber is either the best power or the worst power. It's the worst in that if you never meet another elemental pa master and you're a master of Amber, that power is useless. You can't do anything with it. But once you meet one other elemental master, you just get to have their power and then you meet another one, you get to have both powers. So it's just undoubtedly the strongest one. It's a little broken. I don't think, I think a person, personally, I believe she should only be able to use her power like the, she can only use the power of the last elemental master she touched, not every single one she's ever touched. So that's why Amber is currently in the maximum tier, because it's either the best or the worst, but we're just going to keep her up there for now. So then I guess we'll just go in order by uh, the pictures here. So Ash, uh, the master of smoke, the power of smoke, I'm going to put smoke in the D tier, because I feel like it's just, it can't do all too much. I believe his the whole thing with smoke is you can turn into smoke and sort of disappear but I feel like that's like a less useful version of Shadow, which Shade has right here. And even Shadow's power is not amazing. That's like a worse version of Pale Man. So I don't, I don't think Ash is that good. It, it is useful in some scenarios, but I don't think it's anywhere near the top. Blobo, Master of Nature. So Nature as a power has the potential to be really strong. But I think he's going to be another D tier because... From what we saw in the show of this power, because I'm only basing on what we know in the show, not like the concept of nature elementals. From what we saw in the show from Bilobo, from what the element of nature can do, it's not that much. You can create like vines coming from the ground, but that's about all we saw. And again, I feel like a lot of these other elemental powers are a lot more useful than that. Next, we have Earth with uh, coal here. That is an easy A. Earth is like... It's just raw strength. Like, not only can he shoot, like, Earth Blast from his hands, which is cool, he just has super strength, and super strength in and of itself is so useful. Like, he smashes through walls, he can pick up big, heavy things. Like, it's a simple power. It's not, like, as intricate as some of the other ones, but it's it's an easy A tier. Like, it's so strong. Garmadon is S tier. Garmadon, like, the dark, I don't even know what to call his power, darkness. And I, so I, I can include him on this list because I guess it is an elemental power. But it's essentially like a form of magic. He was able to create, like, the Oni Titan and, like, conquer the city. And then he has, like, this purple energy, which is very similar to Lloyd's. It's just, it, it's so powerful. Like, I don't, I feel like I don't have enough to say about Garmadon. Like, I don't know what else to say. But if you've seen Hunted, you can see how powerful it is. He was able to take down Lloyd who, spoiler alert, is also going to be an S tier, so, yeah, that's an S tier power, it's just amazing, he's able, he gains, he becomes stronger the more he fights, and, yeah, it's, it's just incredible. Gravity, going to be another D tier, as I mentioned before, uh, it's just, you don't see him doing that much in the show, like, all he does is sort of rise up and then flip everything upside down, which is cool in concept, but he never really had any success doing anything in the show, 
So, I don't know. If we saw more from Gravis, maybe he could be moved up. Because I think Gravity has the potential to be really strong. But from what we can see that Gravity can do, it's... It, I don't... Nah, I don't think so. I think he's a D tier. Fire is A as well. Uh, it's just... It's fire. Like, you can shoot fireballs, light things on fire. It's hot, it does damage, and it it's ranged. It's just really strong. There's so much destruction you can cause with it. And then it's also useful in certain situations, too. Like, if you were in a colder area, it can create warmth. Like, as we saw in Secrets of Forbidden from Jitsu, he was able to light fires for the villagers in, I forget, in the Never Realm. So I think it's just a useful power all around, and it's a really strong one, too. So that's going to be an A tier. Lloyd, as I said, is an S tier. He is just... Similar to Cole, kind of, he's just raw power, but his power is more than just physical strength. It's just energy. Like, literally, his element is called energy, and it's just, it's so powerful. It's, yeah, not much else to say. He just, he has his green power, and he can do so much with it. That's an S-tier power. Ice, just like Earth and Fire, is an A-tier power in my eyes. It's not only the power of cold. Like, he ha Zane has the power of cold. Like, he can just chill things, but he can also straight up create ice from the water in his environment and freeze things. And I think that's so powerful to be able to like freeze your enemies or create bridges or I don't like ice is a very versatile power in that you can do a lot of things. With it. It's useful in combat, but it's also useful in just like travel and getting around. Cause like we've seen him use ice bridges. There was in SOG where he created like a ramp that the ninja like spin jutsu up. Like I think it's a super versatile power and it's very strong. And I think it's a good one. Pale Man, the Master of Light, I think I'm going to put in the C tier. Yeah, I think he belongs in the C tier. Because turning invisible is useful, but it's just... There's not enough you can do with it, right? Turning invisible is useful, and it's like a really nice power to have. But there's just not enough you can do with it. Like, every other thing I mention is either is like extraordinarily good at the one thing they do, or is useful in multiple scenarios. Invisible is just like, it can be used to be sneaky, but that's about it. Like, he doesn't have any strength within fighting. And while he is useful in the one thing he does, there is other elements that do that better or the same. So that's why he's going to be in the C tier. Lightning is also A. The main four elements are all A in my eyes. It's just the ability to create lightning bolts. It's got the sort of the same effect as fire and that it's range and it can be hot. It also can like, it's electricity and that can be like, we've seen Jay use it to help like start machinery and stuff. And I think... That versatility as well as just the raw strength that comes with lightning. Like, lightning is a very powerful element, and if you got struck by lightning, that that would hurt. <laughs> it would hurt a lot. So, I think it's an easy aid here. Like, it's it's powerful. Not as powerful as Lloyd or Garmadon, but it's still very strong. Harloff. Metal. Where would I put metal? I'm between B and C for metal. I think I'll put it in B for now, but I may move it down later on. Metal is very similar to Earth, and that's just raw strength, super strength, just, like, huge power that he has. But the thing, the difference is there's not much else. Like, Cole can shoot blasts of rocks and dirt and everything. But Karloff can't. All he can do is turn a little bit bigger and get metallic. And I know that makes him, like, somewhat invulnerable to most attacks, but I don't know. He, he didn't really demonstrate, like, I would say Cole is definitely stronger than him, so... I think B is a fair place to put him. I may move him down to C when I compare it to everyone else, but yeah, I think B is good for now. I think Moro is also going to go in B. I'm not Moro, Wind. I think Wind is also going to go in B. Just because it's another very powerful element. I compare it to, like, if I compare it to the four up here, right? Moro has shown that, like, how dangerous Wind can be. But the thing is, Wind is more annoying than actually, like, useful. Like, you can push people away and blow them down, but, like, lightning can actually, like, hurt. Ice can freeze you in place, fire can burn, and earth is just super strength. So, wind, I feel like, does not have the same, like, punch that the others do. But Moro showed, like, how dangerous it still can really be. It is, like, a really strong element. It's just not as strong as the four above it. Uh, mind, hey, that's me. But no, Nero, the who's the master of the mind, uh, I would put him in A tier as well. I think... Mind is a very powerful element, and they showed it. They showed how it was useful both in combat and in uh, other scenarios as well in the show. Now, this is a little unfair because Nero has gotten a lot more spotlight than a lot of these other elements, but still, that spotlight that he did get showed how powerful the element of the mind really is. 
because not only was he able to best Blobo in a fight without having like anything else except for his brain blast, um, like that in and of itself is amazing that he had the ability to defeat him just using the power of his mind. But then also just the ability to read minds and like to see what people was thinking is just so useful. Like the fact that the ninja were able to learn about Klaus's plan and just how Nero show that he can know what Cole and Jay were thinking. It's just a very powerful ability and I think if we saw more of Nero, we would see like how useful that ability actually is. So I think that's definitely an A tier. It's not as like damaging as some of the other ones up here, but I think the mind reading is such a, an essential skill that it definitely deserves to be in the A tier. Shadow I'm going to put in C tier right next to Light. And the reason for that is because I think they're very similar elements. Like, Light, you could turn invisible no matter where you are, but that's all you could do. While Shadow, it seems like he could sort of disappear into a shadow and then reappear at any other sh shadow. So the thing with that is, like, they both involve, like, disappearing, but Shade can only disappear in certain areas, so that makes him worse than Pale Man, but then he can also, like, transport, which makes him better than Pale Man. So overall, I think they're about on an equal level, both useful but not super useful, and they can... I feel like Shade is better in combat than Pale Man would be, but Pale Man would be far better in a stealth scenario, so. Sound, I'm going to put an F tier. Like, part of this is just because we did not get to see Jacob at all in the show, but what we saw of him was just so weak. Like, he played a guitar and then was able to be aware of his surroundings. Like, I don't, maybe if we saw more of him, I would change my mind, but it just looked so pathetic compared to everything else here. Like, what use is there for the Master of Sound? Like, no, I don't I don't think it's very useful. Griffin Turner, Speed. I'm going to say Speed is probably B tier. And I think he's in a similar spot as Karloff in that he's just like a one-track thing, but he does that thing very well. It's, yeah, same with Karloff and Moro, is that, like, they're super powerful at the one thing they do. It's just their element can only really do one thing. Griffin Turner goes fast, and being fast is extraordinarily, so like we've seen it in both um, Tournament and Hunted, just how being fast enabled Griffin Turner to just like get one up on the villains and win the battle. And it can allow for like to sneak in places as well a little bit, but I feel like mostly he's got his niche and he does it really well. He's like the Flash or Quicksilver or anything. It's a, it's a strong ability, it's just not as strong as the tier above him. The Time Twins. I listen to both because the element of time is one thing. So technically, I believe like the whoever the parent of the Time Twins was had all four powers and then it was split between the two when they had kids. But yeah, I think they belong. They Not I think. They definitely belong in S tier. Like time is so powerful. Even if we like take out the fact that they were should be able to travel through time once they got all four Time Blades and made the, the Iron Doom. Even if we discount that, the, they're able to go forward, backwards, pause, or slow time, and, like, that is crazy. Like, that's so strong. Just to be able to, like, if you get defeated, you can just go back in time and redo it, know what they're gonna do, or if they're charging at you, just slow them down. I feel like it, they are the stronger version of Gryphon Turner, because just by slowing time, they can themselves become faster, or by rewinding time, they can, like, know what's gonna happen, like Neuro, so... They've got attributes that other elements already have, and they do it the best, so I think they're definitely S tier. Tox is between F and D for me. <sighs> I think we'll put Poison in D just because, like, we haven't seen it being used very effectively. Like, all she can do is, well, all what we've seen her do is just, like, shoot a poison cloud out and make someone cough and, like, buckle over. And once she gets it off, it's powerful. But, like, she hasn't been shown to have any range to it. It's sort of just, like, leave it there. And I feel like it's not as useful as some of the other powers. Like, yeah, it can have an effect on someone if she effectively gets it off, but it's just not as useful when comparing them to things like, I don't know, shadow or wind or metal, like it, all that stuff. Like the ability to just create a poison cloud around you is just not that useful. But again, if we saw more from her, maybe my, it would change my mind. Nia, okay, this, I got in trouble for this on Instagram because everyone disagreed with me that Nia, water, goes in the B tier and everyone was like hey and by everyone I mean like two people they were like hey why is Lloyd in S and then these four in A but you put Nia in B why is she the only main ninja in B and that's because in my eyes water is just a way worse version of ice like it can't do any of the things ice can do and it's still a super strong element to be able to shoot water and control water that's super powerful and in the right scenarios it is very powerful like in possession when she was able to create a uh 
a huge wave to take down the preeminent. That was incredible and super powerful. But the thing is, that involved her being surrounded by a body of water. She is not usually surrounded by a body of water, so most of the time, her power just is not as good. And we saw it a lot in Secrets of Forbidden Spinjitsu. She, her water did not work in the Never Realm and did not work in the desert because the desert was too hot and the Never Realm was too cold. Zane doesn't have that issue. Zane can just shoot ice whenever. And not only that, ice is already stronger than water because it can not only is it just a strong blast of force, it can also freeze. It's got that chilling effect while water is just straight power. Like So while Nia, I'd say... If every season of Ninjago took place in the City of Sticks, I think she would be on par with everyone else. Just because of the niche situations where her power works, I don't think she is as universally useful as the other ones. And, like, it's just one of those situations, like, when the, uh, in Sun's Garmadon, when the bounty was falling in the rainstorm, she was able to lift that up. That shows how strong water can be. But most of the time, water isn't that strong. And I feel like to be an A-tier ability, you need to be useful at all times. Camille, I'm also going to put an A tier. Uh, we don't, we didn't get to see enough of her in the show, but from what we did see, I know enough to know that form is an extremely powerful ability. It's on a similar note as invisibility or shade or smoke, but I, I actually think it's just the better version of invisibility because invisibility, you can just disappear and that is it, right? You can disappear and reappear. And that could be used for sneaking into certain situations, but the ability to disguise not only your appearance, but also your voice. I think that is so much more useful because you can't only sneak into places, but you can also trick people. And while it's not as, like, brute force in a fight, like, it's not going to do more damage by shape-shifting the people. You can confuse them and help yourself win a fight in that sense, too. So I think it's definitely an A-tier ability. And not even, like, Zane doing it, right, because he's got his whole robotic hologram thing. Obviously, it's not form, but it's the same ability. Like, it's shown, it's, they have shown how powerful form can be. So I think it's definitely worth the A-tier. And I think that's about it, right? That's all the elements. So, yeah, I think I'm pretty confident in this list. C tier is a little small. You could probably move either Karloff or Griffin Turner down here. But I'm going to keep them where they are. I think this is fair. Uh, I'm confident in most of my rankings. Ash might be able to go up. Uh, Gravity could go up if we saw more from Gravis, but I don't think we'll ever see him again. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident in most of my rankings. But... Those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What elemental powers do you think are the strongest and which ones do you think are the weakest? Because I'm confident with what I said. I feel like I've given good reasons as to why all these are placed the places they are. But if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. And if Nia is your favorite ninja, I'm sorry because apparently I offended a couple people when I posted this on Instagram. So hopefully I didn't offend you by posting this video. <laughs> So if you enjoyed this video, please press like and subscribe if you're new. I said this earlier, but I do Lego videos every single day. So if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. I think that's going to do it for today's video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.